I'm ready to show you how I memorized the 48 Laws of Power. It was very straightforward, but it was a challenge trying to find some images for the actual Laws of Power. And so the way I stored the information was using a memory palace, because this allowed me to keep the order of all the different laws. Since there's 48 with one being the most important, the first location in my memory palace would represent the first law of power. So very straightforward, kind of makes sense, right? And so I actually used two different memory palaces. I had 24 locations in each palace, 24 plus 24 is 48. And so the difficult part was some of these um, laws, the images were as straightforward because I wasn't trying to memorize everything word for word. Let me just zoom in. So I wasn't trying to memorize never outshine the master and make an image for every single word because as you can, as you can see, some of these are a little bit longer, right? So that didn't make a lot of sense. And at the end of the day, I didn't need to memorize these exactly like never outshine the master. No, I can say don't be better than your master. Don't be better than your boss. That means exactly the same thing, right? So this is not a case where I need to memorize exactly what I'm seeing, exactly what the law says. As long as I understand what I'm saying, what my image represents, and say the same meaning as these laws, that's a win. So let's start with the first law. Never outshine the master. So we go to the memory palace. Let's say the sink right here with these uh, wine, wine rack is the first location. Never outshine the master. So I pictured Jafar from Aladdin. And then I pictured a big sun. And Jafar was getting, this <laughs> getting these sun rays from the sun. And then Iago, I think that's his name, the little um, parrot, um, parrot bird thing. He was flying in front of the sun, taking all the sunshine, right? And Jafar is like, hey, get out of my way. Psh, it slaps him away. So that's what I picture at this location. Because he's taking all the sun, right? The sun is shining on Iago. And Jafar doesn't like that. So he outshined, in a sense, you know, took all the glory, all the warm rays. And so Jafar beat him, beat him down. So... That's why I picture it. So if we go to the second location, uh, you say, you say that fridge is the second location. Okay, second power or law of power. Never put too much trust in friends. Learn how to use enemies. So what came to mind here was since I since I was thinking about Aladdin already, <laughs> um, I was thinking about Genie and how you know Genie was friends with Aladdin, you know, trusting him, but then Aladdin got all greedy, and so Genie was all salty and, like, blew away, you know, for a bit. Um, or no, um, Aladdin got mad and put him under the pillow, right? Long story short, Genie put too much trust in Aladdin. So I see that, I see Aladdin asking Genie for something over here, and Genie's like, no, just, like, looking away from him. Um, and then since I was on <laughs> Aladdin, I thought of, uh, Lion King, because it's Disney, right? and thought of Scar. Scar was just like walking around over here next to the fridge and the genie thinks to himself, hmm, maybe I could use Scar and hop on his back and just like right out of here. Yes, I know he could fly and he's magical, but you know, I was trying to match what I'm picturing to the law, like have it represent it. And so I saw genie be coming all buddy buddies with Scar because he's a bad guy, right? He's a villain. So learn to use your enemies. And so, uh, Buddy, buddy, just to get a ride from Star. So that's what I pictured for the second law. And so, as you can tell, I'm trying to create images that represent these words, right? The ideas behind it. Never put too much trust in friends. You know, I see Aladdin asking something from um, the genie. And, you know, he's like, no, like, don't talk to me. Like, I'm gonna turn it back to him. So to me, that represents this specific part of the law. Now for others, it might not, for others you might need to make you know, more images to represent more parts of the law. But I found when going through, it's easier to kind of have images that represent these laws because that sticks out a lot longer. So let's say, uh, let's just you know, jump around. Cause long story short, you know, here, conceal your intentions. Maybe uh, this bar little area is the third location. Conceal your attentions. Maybe I see a tent and there's a whole bunch of like goods in there, like stolen goods. I see this person and he's like, he's under the bar. And um, 
I come by, I walk by, hey, hey, what's in there? Boom. He hides everything. Okay? He closes the tent. He's concealing his intentions. Okay? And so, uh, it just goes like that for the rest of the laws. Okay? That's the kind of straightforward part. So, let me show you what I mean. Um, where... A little bit longer one. Um, okay, what about... When asking for help, appeal to people's self-interest, never to their mercy or gratitude. So for something like this, uh, it's very wordy. And so what I picture is someone begging, okay? And so maybe like, for me, you know, oh, you know, they might be saying, oh, you know, you helped me so much, you're so great, oh, please, please, I need a lot, I need some money. Um, but I see this beggar then start massaging this person to give him something. And so that, you know, pretty much having the beggar out there begging, you know, he him saying some things, you know, I'm doing some motions in my mind. That is enough to represent all of this, you know, very wordy. But that image itself is the key. It's way easier than trying to memorize all these things, all these words, right? Trying to create images for every single one. And so that was the main thing I learned about all of this is that trying to make images for like a lot of the words takes a lot of time it doesn't even help you at the end but having these images that represent these laws plays out a lot more that person begging is so much clearer in my mind like oh, okay no no one's helping him because he's begging you know he's like oh please i'm poor or he's like oh you helped me so much last time right so that imagery is so much stronger and if you want to memorize these laws that's what you should be doing. That was the whole idea with this memory challenge is taking these abstract ideas and trying to make something more concrete with your imagery. And that's what I found out to work perfectly. Having all these little mini stories that represent things. And so some of these laws, uh, they kind of, let's see, it's like strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Yep. Literally that you could use. So there were some cases like one or two where I could literally use what the law was. Like this one, law 42. Because you can picture that, right? So it's all about, okay, I have this image, essentially. This is like an image. When I read this, I can kind of see it right away. It's not about, okay, let me try to make a new image for this. Uh, because that makes no sense at all. Why would you want to create more work just because, you know, trying to change abstract ideas into images? No, this is literally an image right there. Boom. Picture that and you're done. And that's exactly what I pictured my memory palace. I pictured a shepherd walking with sheep, got head in the head and a <laughs> with a stone, and the sheep scattered. That's it. And so there's a lot for you to kind of understand when it comes to memorizing that. You need to, you know, lower the amount of work you're trying to put in. It's not about trying to be lazy, but don't be creating more work than you need to. Use what you can. Use something that's very vivid. That's vivid, you know. And once you start to get in that mindset, you know, you see some abstract ideas or see some wording and it gives you an image already, just use that. There's no reason for you to try to rework into something better. And um, in the beginning, I kind of got a little stuck on that, trying like, okay, what, what, what's going to work here? What's going to work that? To play sucker, to catch a sucker. You know, I was trying to figure something out here. Uh, I was like, okay, play a sucker to catch a sucker. Okay, what does a suck sucker look like? You know, it does he like a loser looking kind of person like i don't know i was like wait hold on i'm a sucker let's just picture a sucker like a lollipop chasing another lollipop okay another sucker um and so play dumber than your mark and maybe you know one of the suckers has like a little dunce hat or something but i was trying to overthink it when i had something right in front of me but that is how i memorized the 48 laws of power i had a memory palace with 40, or I guess two memory palaces that totaled 48 different locations. Went through, created my images from the different laws and placed them into the cor corresponding locations in the palaces. And that's it, very straightforward. And I liked it a lot. Um, it was very fun to kind of, you know, picture different things, but also kind of learn these laws and start to apply them, start to see them like, okay, like what's happening here? Are these true or not? Like I was mentioning, I like seeing the historical examples from the book and then trying to see in real life these things actually exist so having these laws in my head is a lot easier to kind of see kind of test them out there in the world 
So hopefully you enjoyed this challenge as much as I did. Like I said in the first video, there's a forum linked down below. If you memorize the 48 Laws of Power in a different way, please post there and share with others what you did. If you did something differently, if you used maybe the story method to connect all 48 Laws in one big story, I don't know how you would do that. Like, I know how you would do that, but like, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Like, how would you actually make it so it flows nicely and not so complicated? I would love to know if someone did that. That'd be really cool if someone did that. If you shared how and part of your stories, I would greatly appreciate appreciate that because it would allow me to see, okay, maybe there is a way to kind of connect things together in a bigger story. We have like an a story itself, right? You have like a smaller story, but you're connected to another smaller story. That'd be really interesting to see, and I would love to see if anyone did that. And if you did, link down below, post it in the forum. So hopefully you enjoy this video. The next video is going to be me recalling all 48 Laws of Power, but also saying why I'm recalling it in a specific way, because that does the recalling does dictate how you should memorize information. So hopefully you enjoy this video. I'll see you next time.